What is up everybody, it's Gorilla Man here, back with another Farming Simulator video, and in today's video, we are back on Estancia La Pacho, the South American map. Uh, it's probably my favorite map so far, so I keep playing it a ton, doing a lot of videos. Um, today, we are going to be doing silage. So, if you guys don't know what silage is, you'll figure it out by the end of this video, hopefully. Um, my goal is to get it in the bunker and start fermenting uh, by the time I end this video. So this video might be a little bit, a little bit on the longer side. Um, I'm going to try and cut it down within 20 minutes. But starting off, we got this Optima. It's, yeah, it's, it's an Optima. I'm pretty sure it is. It's a Case Optima 300. Let me show you guys. Yep, Optum. Oh, Optum, not Optimum. Optum, uh, I upgraded the engine to a 300 because I needed the most horsepower I can get we're using this on our cultivator I had to buy a new cultivator um, because I'm just sick and tired of having a super small cultivator and our star of planter I figured out cannot plant corn which is a huge huge letdown for me and I was kind of sad by that I was like oh wow that sucks um, so that's what we're dealing with now I got this guy he is going to be uh, cultivating everything because it's the only thing that is big enough uh, the case, uh, the case IH tractors I had, I bought an extra one, and then I just went and sold it because I realized it's just not more, it's not powerful enough. It only has like 200, I think it's sub 200, maybe a high 100 horsepower, and I needed minimum 325 for this cultivator. This has like 312 or something, somewhere around there, so it'll struggle a little bit, but not nearly as much. And I got twin wheels on the back, which should help out tremendously. Um, so that's what we're dealing with right now. It took like, if you just check right here, yeah, it took like this, this little patch right here took like five minutes for one of the small tractors to do. And I was like, ooh, at that point, I might as well just go and rebuy our Stara um, cultivator because that's actually faster. I will drop her down. Oh yeah, this, this gun has got it, no problem. No problem at all. All right, tab back. And over here, we're planting Soybeans on field two, and this guy, I don't even know what this guy's doing out here now. Wait for him to get started. So we need, can go and take this back over here. We're leaving all of our uh, harvesting stuff right around here because we're gonna need it in a little bit anyways. Um, we'll need the, the ninja in a bit, but we're gonna get going on this. I'm gonna go through really quick, finish cultivating all of this um, and then I also bought the John. I, I, I ended up buying a John Deere piece of equipment because I really wanted it. It's the 7200 uh, planter. It's my favorite planter. Fertilizes and plants at the same time. Um, and it's a huge, huge span. It's got like 12 and a half meters or something like that, which is gigantic. So we're going to be using that guy to plant our corn. So once he finishes or once we get uh, going far enough, I'm going to use this one and we're going to start planting corn and then I'll fast forward. So I'll see you guys with a full field of corn and then we'll go from there. It is now the next day, everybody, and we have finally gotten all of our corn planted, and it has grown, as you can see here. Um, have a few issues. <laughs> I'll just go through with you really quick. So what I did was I, when I planted everything, I accidentally hit Y one too many times, and I planted grass. So I had to go through, cultivate the grass, then I had to go back through and replant this. So it cost me a ton of money and a ton of time. So that's why this video did not come out yesterday, um, but it is, yeah, obviously it came out today. Um, and then I also was able to uh, plant and harvest a whole thing of soybeans in the time it took for this corn to grow. And then I was able to sell all those and make some money back enough to go lease at least the uh, forage harvester, which is the one I got right here. This is a John Deere forage harvester. It's the 8300i. It is, I think it's $150,000. Uh, it's a mod, of course, because there's no John Deere like stuff in the game like that. But as you can see here, I got attached up to the Reboke Ninja 3300. So what it does is, if you guys don't know, I'll go through really quick with you. So the Forge Harvester harvests wood chips. Um, I think it's grass or hay because it can like cut. It has like attachments for grass or hay. So this is what they are, they look like. Um, you get the Crone, New Holland, uh, Roastal Mash, those ones. Then I got these two extra ones that are a mod, a little bit cheaper too. That's why that's why I use them. So yeah, these are all my John Deere cutters. Um, they're just like, like they can cut grass, they can do a lot of things. These ones are just um, uh, chaff and corn headers, which is really, really handy because they're pretty pretty big. They're nine meters, it's not, not too shabby for what, what they are, considering that the basic ones are also nine. Um, and this one can fold too, which I'm not sure if those other ones fold. 
Uh, but yeah, so this is what we're gonna be working with. And what happens is I got the the uh, the auger wagon attached up to it because this will spread directly into the auger wagon, and that's how it will go because it has nothing to store the grain with it or the chaff with it. All right, let's get this get this puppy started. We'll unload. There we go. Ooh, that drops down quite a bit. All right, so I'm expecting this to fill up multiple, multiple times here. Um, let's just start it up. What's the star? Lower. Fold. Okay. Oh, I need to start the actual. There we go. All right, so we are going. Oh, what is he doing? Is it spraying out? Um, all right, so it looks like we're chopping up, but nothing's happening. Okay, well, that is weird. It's not pushing anything out. Let's just, let's try and go through a bit here. Okay, I feel like we're just shredding this and it's not, nothing's coming out. All right, we're gonna drop this guy really quick. We're gonna back it up and drop it. We'll switch to our regular tipper really, really quick. Where's it at? It's over there on our F450. Let's bring over the, let's bring over the tipper. I was hoping that that uh, auger wagon would work because it'd be so much easier just to pull up next to it empty really quick like a regular harvester. Um, but maybe you can, maybe you have to use a tipper for this. Let's see. We'll swing in here as best I can. Drop it. Oh, it's gonna be a pain to get out of. There we go, we got it, we got it. We'll just back it up. There we go, all right, so let's see if we can get this to work now. I'm pretty sure I have used this exact same tipper before. Shut that off really quick. Um, so we should be able to do it pretty easy. All right. So then right when we attach up and we start doing it. Maybe, I think I see what it is. Oh, okay, we gotta pipe out, ah. That makes sense now. All right, let's try this one more time then. Humor me, humor me, I'm gonna do this one more time. All right, so then we drop this. Go back over here. Grab the ninja. I was gonna say, I was like, there's no reason for this not to be dumping into the ninja. Okay. It's been a while since I've done chaff or anything with a forge harvester, so you gotta give that to me. All right, drop this off. And the forge harvesters can be really useful if you guys plant um, grass on a field and you need like a lot of grass or a lot of hay. You can use these to go through and clear large amounts um, and bag it up at the same time. It's super simple. Okay, oh, wait, wait, wait. There we go. Uh-oh, it's shooting, it's trying to shoot at the other one. Okay, Let's see if it'll shoot into this one. Oh, it only wants to shoot, okay. One more time. So now we know we cannot use an auger wagon for uh, harvesting. Man, that sucks. That does suck quite a bit. Because an auger wagon make it a lot easier. But it's okay. We'll just snag our tipper. It's already got a little bit in it. So it looks like all the stuff we did shred up, we did lose. Um, which is a pain in the butt. But oh well. Uh, you get a lot of chaff from doing... Uh, like even this size of field, you'll fill up, we'll fill up this quite a few times. So we'll make like four or five or six runs is what I'm thinking. Yeah, because I bet you that one row would fill up this entire thing. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna drive it over. Ooh, this thing's got a good turning radius. I forgot about that. We're just gonna drive this over and we're just gonna go throw it in the uh, bunker. I'll show you guys the bunker over there. I drive through it like every time I try and leave the farm. Um, but we'll we'll go dump this in the bunker because we're not gonna we're not gonna be detaching and reattaching every single time. It might be, I don't think it'll be faster just because of the time it'll take. Um, let's hop out really quick and let's move this. Yeah, I don't think it would be faster for us to uh, detach and reattach, like, an empty. So, 
we're just gonna use the harvester to drive back and forth I probably shouldn't do that but that's what I'm gonna do all right 94 95 oh 99 all right we're going to fold up our header and we're gonna make our way down so this isn't too slow either so Oh, what was that sound? Something, something's going off. You guys hear that? That was weird. Okay, so yeah, this isn't this isn't too slow. This will this won't take too long. I was expecting this to take me like a good hour or two, just going through on my own and just doing all of it. But I think we might be good. All right, so here's our bunker. Now I'm going to pull all the way to the end here to unload. All right, and then what you do is you compact it, so you drive over it a few times with like your truck or whatever, and then once it's compacted at 100%, you can then go through, close that guy down. You can go down, or you can go through, then you can throw a tarp on her, and you're pretty much uh, set and ready to go and start uh, fermenting it. So by the end of the episode, hopefully I'll have that entire field done. I'll probably just fast forward through a lot of it because it's just the same thing over and over again, just going collecting chaff. Um, then you take the chaff, put it in the bunker, compact it down, you throw a tarp over it. I think it might take uh, in one in-game day, maybe two or less in-game days. Um, but then you just do that and it takes no, not really that much time at all. And then you have a ton of uh, silage and you pretty much never have to do silage again. Unless you're like crazy with cows or animals. Um, but we're not that crazy. All right. Got to tab around a lot to get to these uh, different machines. There we go. All right, so now we're just gonna go through, do this row, do another row. We won't even finish both these rows actually. So it's about one and a half rows will max us out. So I'm just gonna fast forward through this, guys. Probably be about two minutes of just me just. Uh oh, I just <laughs> I just ghost walked the ghost walked the forge harvester. That was pretty funny there. All right, yeah, it'll be about two minutes. I'll be right back, guys. I'm just going to fast forward through everything, and we're going to beat this field real quick. All right, everybody. Oh, there we go. I just finished everything. I filled up that chaff bunker. I'll check and see what it is in just a second. Let me just drop off the uh, the forge harvester real quick. All right, we'll set him right here. So we are currently at, in our chaff fill levels, 149,000, which means we have 149,000 worth of silage after we... Um, compact all this and then fertilize it or not fertilize it ferment it um and you can fill this shaft bunker up all the way to like that edge if you can manage to fill this that much it'll be a couple million um uh like pounds worth of chaff here i hope this one counts right here but yeah no uh 61 compacted so far so we're gonna go grab our we were on it 
Grab our F450 real quick. And we're gonna whip it around and we're gonna take this bad boy over there and we're just gonna drive back and forth across the chaff um, quite a few times just until it's fully compacted and then we'll be able to throw a tarp on that bad boy and call it good. Um, then we'll just gotta wait a day or two and wait for all of our uh, fermentation to take process or to take a hold and go through everything. I don't know how long uh, fermenting takes in like real life. I assume it takes like months, maybe even years. Oh, are you serious? Oh, we just... Oh, we just high centered the Ford F450. Wait. Wait, she's backing up. She's backing up slowly. Yeah, there we go. All right, note to self, don't drive over that little lip over there. Or if I do, I just gotta, I gotta send it. I just gotta go crazy with it. Who, who? Yeah, there we go. We just gotta go quick. Okay, so this is gonna take quite a few. I'm pretty sure that it's the bigger the truck or the bigger the piece of equipment and the, uh, the heavier, I'm assuming too, the heavier, it, it'll probably pack it way better. Um, I know with that chaff, uh, the forge harvester, we were doing it pretty quickly because we got down to 60 some after going through it like five times, which is pretty impressive. All right, so we're just gonna drive back and forth a few more times, 78, 79. We just gotta keep driving over, backing over, and this is kind of like how uh, gravel or anything else works in this game. It just, just it just kind of evens out and uh, uh, just distributes. Like if you guys have ever done anything with like the gra uh, like the gravel or the dirt mods, um, it's the same thing. Or the, any sand mods, um, they all just slowly disperse out, and they just kind of the little mounds just get worn down. Oh, about, about about got myself eye centered there. A little bit worried, a little bit worried, but we're good. All right, 93, 94. Okay, last pass here. Boys and girls, here we go. We're gonna have silage for absolute days. All right, there we go. Let's go throw a tarp on her. All right. Ready? Whew. All right, so there you go. It's fermenting now. 1%, um, it just throws a, bunk, uh, throws a blanket across all this. Then what happens is as you, oh, so yeah, we didn't get that little bit right there, dang it. Um, so as you pull silage away once it's done fermenting, it, the tarp will slowly decrease and just move back as you move in further and take more. Um, but we're gonna end it here, everybody. We finally got silage going, we got, so we'll have enough, um, I'll show you this really quick. We will have enough for cows and everything. Um, See, yeah, mainly, yeah, it's all cows. Yeah, we'll have enough for cows. And then next episode, oh, get that off the screen. Next episode, we will be doing, let me show you really quick, placeables. The GTXM Mixing Station. It is a TMR or Total Mix Ration Forge Mixer. Um, it's super easy. You throw everything in, you drive over the little spout right here. If you guys can see that, you drive over that little spout and then it just spits out a power food mixture or TMR, whatever you want to call, into it, into your uh, uh, tipper. Then you just drive it over and you pour it in the cows or wherever you want it to go. So that's going to be super helpful. We're going to place that right around here. Um, we're actually probably not right there because we want to keep this little field right here for some grass cutting. That's what we've been using it for. but. That's what you guys got to look forward to next episode. That'll be coming up here in the next couple of days. But until then, everybody, I'll see you guys in the next Farming Simulator video.